Hello and welcome to Week in Weird for the second week of 2022. If you remember last week, I was mulling over different taglines I wanted for the series and I asked you guys for your help. So I'm going to be scrolling through the comments of last week's video to try to figure out what we should actually call this series. Sure, Week in Weird is fine, but that doesn't really sum up everything we talk about. So as I go through this week's stories, I'm going to occasionally check in with my comments and I'm going to try to find some good ones. But before that, we're going to talk about a subject that is near and dear to my heart. Um, th that, that being American football, can you tell I'm being sarcastic? Somehow this is actually my second story about football, and I haven't even been doing this series for eight weeks. I think this is actually my eighth week. We're going to be talking about the story of Antonio Brown. He is a player for the Buccaneers who won the Super Bowl last year, and he, uh, he put on quite the show last week. The following story comes from ESPN. Now this is going to be a quote from Brown telling his side of the story. I took a seat on the sideline and my coach came up to me, very upset, and shouted, What's wrong with you? What's wrong with you? I told him, It's my ankle. But he knew that. It was well documented and we had discussed it. He then ordered me to get on the field. I said, Coach, I can't. He didn't call for medical attention. Instead, he shouted at me, You're done! while he ran his finger across his throat. Coach was telling me that if I didn't play hurt, then I was done with the Bucks. Guy has a long-ish lasting ankle injury, his coach wants him to play, he doesn't want to get on the field because his ankle's hurting him, they start yelling at each other, uh, and, then th and then this happens. I know we were losing to the Jets, and that was frustrating for all of us, but I could not make football plays on that ankle. Yes, I walked off the field, but there's a major difference between launching from the line and taking hits compared to jogging off the field with a rush of emotions going through your mind. I'm reflecting on my reaction, but there was a trigger. The trigger was someone telling me I am not allowed to feel pain. Yeah, so, so his coach told him he's done? So he rips off his uniform, tosses it in the stands, and just runs out of the stadium. Oh my god, yeah, there he goes. Chucks it. Totally shirtless. This is January. First week of January, I think they're in New York. I think there's the, yeah, there's the Jets home stadium. So they're in New York, New Jersey. He's peacing out, high-fiving. <laughs> he just leaves. And then, then we get the coach's side of the story. He's no longer a buck, Coach Bruce Arians said after Tampa Bay's come from behind. So they, they, they ended up winning. 28-24 to 24 victory over the Jets. They didn't even, like, need this. Yeah, in the previous statement, Antonio said, like, oh, I get that we were all in, uh... Everyone was acting all emotional because we were losing. They didn't even lose. The coach just said, that's the story. <laughs> we get the mad lad running off peace sign shirtless in January on his hurt ankle. So if you remember from my video from last week, you know that I asked my audience for a new tagline for my show. Originally, I thought it should be something to the effect of news that doesn't matter. Then I started covering news that does matter, like an Olympian that was possibly kidnapped by the Chinese government or Betty White's death or a news story that we're going to get to later where a lot of people were harmed. And I don't want to imply that those news stories don't matter. But I still want something whimsical to be the tagline of the show. So now I'm going to go through my comments and try to pick out the best ones. I am blind reacting to these. I don't know what you guys said. This world is nonsense. Week in weird. It's technically news. <laughs> Week in weird articles of the abnormal. Dumb news with dumber commentary. Hey, don't you dare call me a commentary channel. Week in Weird, for news stranger than fiction. I actually really like that one. That's, that's like, that's like the tagline of my whole channel, so that kind of fits really well. Thank you, Blue Tiger 2468 I hope that you do not have a majestic Lego butthole. I really hope that people watched my video last week, or else that makes no sense. That, you know, and they ask you how you are, and you just have to say that you're fine when you're not really fine, but you just can't get into it because they would never understand. Now, the very next day after Antonio Brown walked off the field, we got what is perhaps the most depressing news in our current climate of chaos and anxiety. Little Caesars Hot and Ready Pizza no longer costs $5. That's right, folks, inflation is hitting our fast food pizza. Not even Little Caesars is immune from price increases. The chain signature $5 hot and ready pizza now costs 11% more. Little Caesars is selling a new and improved version of the recognizable pizza, which has 33% more pepperoni and a new price of 5.55. dollars 
Why not just go all the way, make it 666, you know what's going on here. You know this is a sign of the end times. This is its first price increase in nearly 25 years. The pizza first went on sale in 2001 and differentiated itself from competitors because it was made ready for takeout without the need to pre-order it. It's also disgusting. The article also talks about how the average cost of eating at a restaurant has spiked 5.8% in the last year because, again, of inflation and COVID stuff. Uh, but yeah, the news that needs Dr. Phil. Please, Dr. Phil needs us. He wouldn't be relevant if it wasn't for a bunch of people making Gibby exposed videos. News you can laugh at and secretly cry about later. Facts like fiction, because it's news too weird to be fake. Again, I like that one. Chris Chan's in jail, so let's let other things be weird. Not so normal news. I think if you want to make it totally alliterative, you take out the so and it'd just be not normal news. Okay, so there's some context to this next story that you need to understand to know why this is such a headline-making news event. So there's a game that came out in the mid-2010s called Undertale, and if you know anything about video games, then you've almost certainly heard about it. It was big all over YouTube, it's a big indie video game made mostly by one person. It's an RPG that is heavily inspired by the tone and mechanics of Earthbound, which was a cult classic from the Super Nintendo. It's where we get the glorious character Sans from. This game also got its own cult status and was also very highly reviewed when it came out and became a favorite amongst Let's Players on YouTube. One of the things that's so influential about the game is its amazing music, which was made by the game's creator, Toby Fox. The most popular song to come out of the game, which I myself have not even played, is called Megalovania, a song so popular that people like me who have not played the game have still heard it a thousand times. Megalovania is kind of noteworthy itself because it's actually a modified version of a song from Earthbound, the Nintendo-made early 90s Super Nintendo game. And when Sans was added into Super Smash Bros., they added the song Megalovania into Super Smash Bros., which means that a Nintendo game added a song that was the hacked version of a Nintendo song into their game. If you're watching this, you almost certainly are aware of a lot of internet memes, and one of the bigger ones to come out of Undertale is uh, dunking on MatPat of Game Theory. I actually have a whole video about Game Theory, if, if you, if you want to watch that. Just like every YouTuber, MatPat wanted to get in on what the currently trending topic was, so he made a video about Undertale. Unfortunately, the best theory that he could come up with is that uh, uh, Sans is, is Ness from Earthbound. Basically, Toby Fox, the guy who made Undertale, is a really big fan of Earthbound, so he just, MatPat just, just found a bunch of connections between the two games to try to connect their narratives, even if it made absolutely no sense. So people just dunked on MatPat for doing something that was very clearly a uh, grab for views in a very poorly researched video, and that became its own meme. That meme got even stronger a couple years later when MatPat went and visited the Pope. Like, like, like Pope Francis. The, the, the Pope. Whenever you visit the Pope, you're supposed to give him a gift, and uh, Matt Pat's gift to the Pope, the Pope, was a Steam download code for Undertale. <laughs> now, I think it's funny, and I think it's cute, and the Pope probably gets a million gifts a year, and then they go off into a Pope gift room. It's not like he actually is looking forward to like, oh man, I really want some some socks from that American diplomat. No, like, who cares? It's all symbolic. And so MatPat actually made a whole video talking about why he gave the Pope Undertale, and the reason is that Undertale is a video game where you can choose to be completely peaceful and uh, solve everything through puzzles. Basically, you can solve every encounter without using violence, and he thought that that was a good message to share with the, the Pope. Uh, so he got dunked on for that, too, because people thought it was cringy that he was giving the Pope a video game that he would obviously never play. I don't even think the Pope has a Steam account. So the news story, and why this is relevant this week, um, <laughs> is because a, uh, a circus act came in and performed in front of the Pope, and one of the songs that they did their little performance to was Megalovania, was the song from Undertale, the most famous song from Undertale that's basically synonymous with the game. Meaning after all this time, the Pope, who clearly did not play Matt Pat's copy of the game, still heard the song, and in some way is now connected to the game Undertale because he heard the song. <laughs> the prophecy came true. Pope Francis and Undertale are now intrinsically linked together. Unusual news. <laughs> 
Okay, I really like that one. That's a valiant effort. I just don't know if I'll be able to pronounce it. Welcome to un- un- new- <laughs> Hello and welcome to Unusual- Unusual- I can't- Hello and welcome to this week's episode of Unusual News. <laughs> People are just gonna think that I have a speech impediment. This week on Man Reads Reddit Titles and Giggles. <laughs> How dare you? How dare you imply that I've ever been on Reddit? And now we're gonna talk about our final story for this week, and if anything is emblematic of the fact that I don't want the tagline of the show to be stories that don't matter, it's this. You probably heard that I-95 south of DC was shut down for about 24 hours this week. Snowfall of 12 inches caused a traffic accident, which then caused traffic, which went back about 100 miles. People were stuck there for hours upon hours, and there's just countless stories of what people did to survive in their cars overnight in below freezing temperatures. Some people talk about how they were only going for drives that should have lasted about two hours, and ended up being there for 20 hours. Some people were running out of gas, some were running out of food, there's a bunch of stories about humanitarian efforts to get food out to these stranded people. People who were alone with their cars, people who were there with their young children, elderly people. It was a horrific event that was caused by a combination of bad government planning and a mother nature. One of the people trapped in the traffic was Tim Kaine. Uh, you might remember that he was Hillary Clinton's vice presidential pick in the 2016 election. He said he was stuck in his car for about 21 hours. It was really, really cold last night, Kane said. The article goes on to talk about how running out of food and gas was a big issue for a lot of people, but that Kane was fine because he had a full tank of gas and a nice coat. Another story comes from Sophia Colson. She spent 19 hours stuck in her vehicle. She said she heard motorists scream in the dark in frustration Monday night. Some abandoned their vehicles and tried to walk along the highway, including people she saw fall in the snow and ice. This is literally a nightmare scenario. If you've ever seen the gridlock episode of Doctor Who, you know exactly why this is one of my biggest nightmares. We're trying to stay positive, Coulson said Tuesday, after being stuck with her 63-year-old aunt who has one lung and needs supplemental oxygen, a diabetic brother and her 13-year-old son. But it feels like we've been abandoned. Virginia Department of Transportation just left us stranded last night and didn't try to do anything to get us out of this situation. They didn't put in the effort. They missed a family funeral in New York and subsisted on Diet Dr. Pepper, cheese crackers, and ginger snap cookies while their gas tank neared empty. There's another story of a 93-year-old man who was traveling south for the winter to escape the snows of New York who got trapped in his car for 17 hours. He didn't have a car charger for his phone and he wasn't tech savvy enough to get his GPS to work, so while he was on the phone with his daughter who was in New York City for like most of the time, uh, they couldn't actually figure out where he was. He stayed in his car for an entire night and they were trying to book him a hotel but obviously they were all full of the people who were trapped in the traffic. And eventually he was saved by AAA. And then the most clickbaity uh, headline of all of these stories is that a man was charged $600 from Uber because he had to sit in this traffic for so long. He was taking an Uber from the airport. We didn't have any food or water, he said. After a nine hour trek, Peters got home Tuesday and paid a $200 bill. But then Peters said Uber added $400, raising his total bill to $600. That's just insanity. Apparently, uh, Uber refunded the entire trip, but that's just like, dystopian nightmare. So everything about our world sucks, things are falling apart, and the only thing you can do is laugh. That's my motto. Can't you see the humor on my face? No, but seriously, in situations like this, all we can do is be glad that not that many people were hurt and that the situation resolved itself and that hopefully, uh, things won't be this bad in the future and that the government will get its act together. Because if there's one thing we learned from the pandemic, uh, it's that the government is, is really good at reacting to natural disasters. Thank you for watching. You can follow me on Twitter at GIBI underscore Devin. I'll be around next week for next week's news in whatever this is called. <laughs> week in Weird. I read like 30 comments about new taglines for the show and I totally forgot what it was actually called. 
I'm gonna have my uh, December update for Chris Chan coming this week, and I also have a special video telling you about a new special topic too that should also come out before my next week in weird. Bro, no offense, but the shave you got on is not it. Dude, I've had this exact same beard for five years. You gotta you got have a sideburns and then a little chin strap to a goatee because when you're fat, it gives you the illusion of having a jawline. This is the ideal beard for fat guys, okay?